Oh my god, Ariel, did you see Cinderella? Yeah, Snow White. Like, her butt is so big. Like, one of those rapper's girlfriends. Yeah, it's so fake. Almost like Jasmine's nose. What's wrong with Cinderella? We can excel in school, play sports, go to college, aspire to, and get... Jobs previously reserved for men, be working mothers, and so forth. But in exchange, we must obsess about our faces, weight, breast size, clothing brands, decorating, perfectly calibrated child wearing, about pleasing men and being envied by other women. Growing up, what made us girls? This was Laura Isaacs when she was like four. Loved Barbie. I loved stuffed animals. This is Marshmallow. And my favorite princess was Belle. Mainly because she had brown hair like me. Thankfully though, and in retrospect, it's pretty good she was the reading quote smart slash bestiality princess. Um, Cause I think she kind of got me into reading, which is a plus. This is me when I was little. Barbies I played with, basketballs I played with, it. I played with Legos with my little cousins. And there really wasn't a limit to what I played with and now I'm pretty much thankful for that, that I wasn't shaped into becoming this little princess bratty little thing. So pretty much I played with everything. This is a picture of me as a kid. My favorite toy was Barbie because it's a type of toy where you use your imagination a lot so you can play by yourself and still have fun. I think I grew up to be well balanced and I don't think that, you know, playing with Barbie traumatized me in any way. So, Hi guys, my name is Priscilla. Um, this is me at five or six years old um, playing with my favorite stuffed toy. I grew up with many, many dolls. Everything that I had involved it's having to be pink or dresses. My parents are Mexican, so they believe in that, like, pink is for girls, boys have, like, trucks, and I'm very, very, you could say very girly. From Hi, I'm Sam, and this is the photo I chose. Playing with the little Ernie doll right there. And I played with a, a vast variety of toys as a kid, and my parents didn't really tell me what I could and couldn't play with. I would play with wrestlers, and then I'd play with Barbies, or I'd play basketball, so I had, I, I wasn't really told what to do. Hi, I'm Victoria. This is a picture of me and my sister playing when we were small. It's a picture of me and her in a box. We have a lot of, you know, dolls, and like, we had a lot of tricycles. We had this Barbie convertible we used to play into. My dad and my mom did not force just girl stuff on us. We did play a lot of sports when we were small. So like right now I'm not a I'm not a girly girl now and I don't think I ever will be. From Shirley Temple to Barbie, the history of dolls and the influences they have. The earliest documented dolls go back to the ancient civilizations of Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Modern doll manufacturing has its roots in Germany, going back to the 15th century. With the advent of new materials such as porcelain and plastic, dolls became increasingly popular. Since the late 1990s, girl power programs have featured strong girl characters. Some girl characters are nothing new. Back in the 1930s, Shirley Temple often played strong dynamic characters who were independent. Shirley Temple is not without controversy. While she was seen as an innocent child icon, she was at the same time depicted as a sexualized commodity by Hollywood, 
often starring in baby burlesque where she would dance half naked for the pleasure of young boys. Despite this controversy, Shirley Temple was her first child celebrity. She was made world famous by her movies and she was a merchandiser's dream. Her doll alone made a profit of $42 million by 1941. Shirley Temple's face was in everything, including beady cereal boxes. Even though the Shirley Temple doll was the first celebrity mass marketed doll towards kids, it is not the most successful doll that honored goes to Barbie. Barbie is based off of a German comic strip character called Bill Lily. Bill Lily is a working girl. Yes, Barbie is based off of a hooker. Barbie promotes an unrealistic idea of body image for a young woman. A standard Barbie doll is 11.5 inches tall. If she was real, she'd be 5 foot 9. She would have a 36 inch chest, an 18 inch waist, and 33 inch hips. And she would be anorexic. And let's not forget the teen talk Barbie, who infamously said, math class is tough. While it's true, I do agree with that comment, it's not a message we want to send to young girls. Now, even though Barbie has a lot of bad qualities, she does have a few redeeming ones. She is an independent woman. She doesn't rely on Ken to support her. She has an education and can be successful at any career. Barbie has been everything from an astronaut to a NASCAR driver. Barbie can be whatever a child wants her to be. She helps develop imagination and creativity. With or without Barbie, an unrealistic image of beauty will continue to be marketed to young girls. Whether it's Barbie or Disney princesses, anything can have a positive or negative effect on a developing mind. The goal of a parent is to filter out the mass media and teach their child media literacy skills. We have a new student with us. She just moved here from Africa. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Janice. This is Damien. Watch out! New meat coming through! That's Karen Smith. She is one of the dumbest girls you will ever meet. I'm kind of psychic. Really? It's like I have ESPN or something. I thought you think you're cute yet? There's this guy in my calculus class. His name's Aaron Samuel. <gasps> no, no. That's Regina's ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriends are off limits. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. <laughs> But this was girl world. All the fighting had to be sneaky. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. Where did the idea for Disney princesses come from? Well, in early 2000, Andy Mooney he went to a Disney on Ice show and he saw little girls in homemade costumes. So, it clicked in his head. Get dolls and dresses in the market. It was genius. By 2001, profits soared by $300 million. By 2009, profits were $4 billion. The question here is, why do little girls love Disney princesses? There are 26,000 Disney, pro Disney princess products on the market right now. And it's just growing. It's literally the largest franchise for little girls on the planet. It's hard to tell if these little girls want these items or if they're being coerced into liking such items. Adults seem to bond with this consumerism. They get a sense of reconnection with their childhood. The, having a connection with the princesses seemed to help preserve a sort of innocence. So it has become literally impossible for little girls not to own at least one princess-themed item. Next, let's take the American Girl dolls. So they represent a better image for girls to look up to. A more realistic image, in fact. But why the hell are they so expensive? They only can appeal to a select few individuals because no one can afford them. These dolls come with books to help, you know, tell the story of these dolls. Most of these books preach against materialism, yet they are, su yet they are super expensive and they're totally being hypocrites. They represent a better image. It does not stop Disney from poisoning them, too. Introducing, drumroll, da -da -da -da, American Girl doll princess outfits. Yay! Woohoo! Thank you, Disney. We thank you. Quote Ornstein The simplicity of American Girl is expensive, while the finery of princess comes cheap. They are promoting shopping. Like Peggy Ornstein says, Nothing illustrates the gold mine it has become or the contradictions it represents better than the color pink. The real story of Cinderella was written by the Grimm's brothers. When the oldest stepsister tries on the glass slipper, her toe does not fit. 
so her mother gives her a knife and tells her to cut some of it off. When the youngest stepsister tried on the glass slipper, her heel did not fit. So her mother, again, gave her a knife and told her to cut off part of her heel. In the Grimm's Brother version of Snow White, Snow White eats the poisonous apple that the queen gives her. Then the dwarves display her in a glass casket up in the mountain. When the prince comes and sees her, he wants to take her back to his castle as a trophy. So when the men are carrying her on the way back, they trip and fall. And that's what causes the little piece of apple to come out of Snow White's throat. In the Hans Christian Andersen version of The Little Mermaid, The Little Mermaid saves the prince, sacrifices her voice to get legs. She meets the prince, however, the prince is already getting married to another girl. She feels despair, then she is given a knife to kill the prince in order to save her life. However, she doesn't go through with it and she ends up killing herself. You must plunge the knife into the prince's heart. Princess Mermaid! In the true version of Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Beauty is awake is not awakened. Instead, she is raped by the king, ends up being pregnant, gives birth to two kids. When she wakes up, she finds out that she's been raped and she has two kids to take care of. My granddaughter Amelia. <gasps> Gretchen! Edgar! You want to know a big secret? Tell me. The cucumber does nothing. And this! And give you... A princess. Although Mia was amazingly smart, that didn't matter because her looks weren't up to par. Instead of instilling in girls that beauty overpowers all, how about letting girls know that looks don't last a lifetime but knowledge does? A study done on 1,100 8 to 12 year olds conducted by New York City based Girl Scout Research Institute found that over 93% of girls surveyed were interested in going to college and 76% said they would have careers. Although the girls surveyed were big fans of being a princess, they still had other dreams, goals, and aspirations. Now about life size. Even though I do so many things, my real purpose in life is to help girls. I strive to present a positive image of womanhood because I believe that girls everywhere should know that all things are possible. Throughout the film, Tyra Banks goes on and on about how she is the perfect role model for girls because she can teach them everything they need to know and that everything is possible. But what I find she teaches them is that not everything is possible unless you have the looks to back it up. She gives this idea that without a makeover, that without a boyfriend, your life will be crap. But doing what you love, your life's a sham, apparently. Yeah. In my opinion, this film was not the best thing for kids to be seeing, at least girls. Sometimes when you need help... How can we be so smart that everyone kind of thinks we're losers? Reading Earthling. Guys like her. And since guys don't like us, I figured Shelly here could teach us how. Now we can be the best versions of her. The movie that I saw relate chapter two because society does want to have so many different things in one person and it makes it so hard for girls to be viewed as the girl, the perfect girl because I mean who can do all that? I know I can't do that. I can't go to work. I can't go to school and still come home and try and look good or even bother going to the gym. Shelly came in and she was like, all right, I got the perfect thing to do. I'm going to turn you guys into like popular girls, giving them a makeover and changing their appearance as well as changing the way they viewed um, other people. If somebody makes you look a certain way, you actually tend to feel different than what you really are. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Hey, what up, Grab girl? my glasses, I'm out the door. I'm gonna hit this city Let's before go. I leave. Brush my teeth. I'm talking pedicure on our toes. Toes, trying on all our clothes. Clothes, boys blowing up our phones. Phones, trying to get a little bit tipsy. Ew, get off of me. Ugh, as if. 
this video, I will be talking about why the Paper Bag Princess is incredibly awesome for readers of all ages. Although it was published more than 30 years ago, this book is still extremely revolutionary due to its unique plot. It's a story about a princess named Elizabeth who sets off to fight a dragon that has destroyed her kingdom and kidnapped her fiancé, Prince Robert. In the process of burning down her kingdom, the dragon had ruined all her princess-like clothes, so all she had left to wear was a paper bag. The rescue does not go as planned, though, as the ungrateful prince refuses to be saved unless Princess Elizabeth returns wearing more princessy clothes. Such unappreciative demands help Princess Elizabeth realize that she's better off without Ronald, and she rides off into the sunset in her paper bag. The bag princess tells readers of all ages that you must always strive to live your life for yourself. This is what a feminist princess looks like.